Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, hi, my name is Alyssa, and for today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys my eyeshadow collection while doing a bit of decluttering. I am super pumped for this because I've been meaning to kind of go through my stuff and I figured I would share it with you guys. Now I do just wanna go ahead and say that this is not gonna be some like shock value video where I have hundreds of things to show you and I'm like doing a ruthless declutter where I get rid of like half my collection. If that's the video you're looking for, this is not it. I do hope you'll still watch it, but yeah, I'm going to be very gentle on myself because I already kind of make sure that I don't buy or use things that I may receive in um, subscription boxes that I know I don't want. So my collection is not ridiculously huge. Again, I don't have hundreds of things to show you. I definitely do have more than what the average consumer would consider even remotely necessary because I have been doing makeup a long time, thus I've been buying for a long time and collecting for a long time. Sometimes it's so hard to let things go. So anyways, without further ado, because I know this video is gonna be longer than anything I normally put up, I really, really hope that you enjoy it. And if you would like to see my eyeshadow collection, then let's just go ahead and get started. Okay, jumping into this, I do have this broken down into palettes and then single shadows and glitters. And then with my palettes, I have it broken down from like most expensive to most affordable and then kind of grouped together by brand just to hopefully make this seem a little bit more cohesive. I don't know if that's actually gonna translate, but I hope it does. So jumping into this, I'm going to talk about this Melt Cosmetics stack. I obviously have them all pulled out and magnetized now, which is a really fun feature. This is specifically the baby girl stack, and as you can see, it's a bunch of really pretty pinks and like corals and stuff like that. It's a really gorgeous palette. They do like slide all back together like this, and this is how it stays stacked up. Next, I have this Natasha Denona, and this is the Sunset Palette. This is a palette that I definitely love the tones on. These are definitely some of my favorite shades to use. I'm such a warm tone makeup lover. They are so great. However, this palette is very, very, very expensive. It is like $130 and it is not worth that price at all. I hardly ever use this palette. It is definitely something that I have colors in other palettes, more affordable palettes, and I just don't think the shadows are $130 worth of quality either. So I'm not going to be getting rid of this just because it was so stinking expensive. I'm definitely going to force myself to use it a little bit more. The only way I'll be getting rid of this is when it finally kaputs and it goes in the trash. I do also have this Natasha Denona All Matte Palette. This is the Safari Palette. Absolutely stunning. I have not even used it yet. You can see that they are all brand new and never been touched, never been swatched. And I only bought this because it was on super sale during the Sephora VIB sale. It was already on sale, then I got it even more on sale. This is the Dose of Colors Baked Browns Eyeshadow Palette. This is another palette that I have actually never even used. I haven't touched them or done anything with. I'm really disappointed in myself on that because these are beautiful colors. I'm not gonna lie to you. When I got this, I was really hoping for more of like the Sassy Siennas or the Marvelous Mobs just because I have less of those shades where I already have many of these in my collection. Um, I can't speak on the formula. I do like other Dose of Colors eyeshadows, which we'll be talking about in a minute, but I do not know. I have heard mixed reviews on these, so I'm excited to see how it goes, but I definitely want to give it a try, I think. If not, I feel like if I don't use it in at least another month, this is just gonna be something that I just give away because it is brand new and I haven't touched it. I don't know, I just feel like this could be good for travel, but I already have palettes that I prefer for travel, if you know what I'm saying. So I'm on the fence about whether or not I'm gonna keep this. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on if you think these are even worth it, if they're good, if I should just try and give it to somebody else. This one right here is my favorite palette, probably, I would venture to say probably my most favorite palette that I do own. This is the Dose of Colors Desi and Katie Franication Collection. You guys have seen this on my channel multiple times now, but it is absolutely stunning. I have literally nothing negative to say about it. Every shade in here performs flawlessly. They are so pigmented, so easy to blend. The mattes are my favorite. Every shade in here works on my skin tone. The shimmers are out of this world and super, super stunning. I'm not getting rid of this. I will never get rid of this. I will probably end up buying another one of these. This is, this is supreme. This is supreme eyeshadows, if you know what I'm saying, just so good. 
And then I also have this mini dose of colors palette. I'm not sure its actual name, to be honest, because I've had it so long. It's so good you guys it's so beautiful they all are really really nice and they all work different when they are wet or dry and so i really do like this palette it's great for toppers that's my favorite thing about it this is the Too faced just peachy matte palette i love this palette you guys uh this has fond memories for me because i got it when i went and visited my friend amy and we did a bunch of shopping and so it was like a part of like a really fun trip that I had. But you guys, the quality is so nice here. Again, these are some of my favorite tones. I love the warm tones. It has the great berries. This is a really, really nice formula in my opinion. I love the way it smells because it literally smells like peaches. It is so lovely. You guys already know, this is the Anastasia Modern Renaissance Palette. It does look a lot like the Too Faced Palette I just showed you in terms of the tones, which you guys know I like. I have not used this palette in a minute just because I have other ones that I really like more, but I am definitely going to try and continue to use it because this, in my opinion, for the longest time was one of the only good palettes from Anastasia. I am not a big Anastasia um, eyeshadow fan. My problem with Anastasia palettes is a lot of these really do look similar. I am going to be keeping this one just because I do really like it. It was one of the uh, more expensive purchases that I have made in my time. And I've had it for so long that it just has like a special place in my heart. I also really do like this uh, soft matte packaging. It does get dirty as you can see, but I do like it. But this one, you guys this one this is the anastasia beverly hills jackie ina palette this is the superior anastasia beverly hills palette i will die on this hill this palette has also been featured on my channel many 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 times i love this so much while the modern renaissance is good this is 10 times better and like i said in my opinion the best one that they have this is the only palette in my opinion in their lineup that does not look like all the other palettes and you don't have what looks to be like seven of the same shade in this palette this is the conspiracy palette in collaboration with shane dawson the packaging is unlike any other it's super dope i know you guys have to know what this looks like on the inside but here it is i have used this a few times uh, just because I've been kind of waiting and again trying to cycle through everything. Jeffree Star, all your opinions aside, he does have a really wonderful eyeshadow formula in my opinion. They are really, really nice. This one is a bit more funky, but I do enjoy using it. I'm excited to continue to use it. This is my oldest Jeffree Star palette. Uh, this is the Androgyny palette. I really do enjoy this one. I like how thin the packaging is and I like that it's got like a snake skin print. It's super fun. This is what it looks like on the inside. And when I first got this, you guys, this was probably the most colorful thing that I owned for the longest because like I said, I love warm tones. And this had like the purple, the green, the blue. And it was really fun and really unique. I have not been using this like I should. I definitely want to continue to use it because again, I do like his eyeshadow formula. I definitely think it has gotten better over time. Like this wouldn't be the best one in my opinion, but I do really like the shadows and I love the pan sizes. That is a very generous pan size. So that is why I do appreciate that. This is the Jeffree Star Jawbreaker palette and I would say this is my favorite one that I own from him. I definitely will be keeping this palette because it just covers so many bases of things in my collection. It just means that I don't purchase many things because I already own this and have so many colors in it that I don't really need anything else. Again, I would say this is one of the best formulas, this one and the Conspiracy palette from him. They are very, very nice. These are kind of pricey at like 50 something dollars. So I get it, but I do really like this palette. Next, I'm gonna talk about the Tati Beauty Volume 1 palette. You guys, this is so, so nice. I still think this was such a genius technique for a first palette from her brand. I love that it's neutrals, but like you still get the purples and then the deep blacks and like gunmetal grays. So you can definitely do many, many looks from this palette alone. And this palette also complements 
anything in your collection. Like, I feel like you cannot go wrong with this palette. So this next one is the Iconic London Day to Slay Eyeshadow Palette. So I got this in a boxy charm at one point this year, I believe, and it is a pretty decent palette. I don't have any other Iconic London eyeshadows. They do blend out very nice. It is very pretty. It is very neutral. Um, I absolutely detest the packaging. I have said this many times. It's way too thick. It's way too bulky. It was so unnecessary, so I'm not a fan. I also don't like how the mirror doesn't actually fold all the way back, so that just irritates me in and of itself. But like I said, the shadows are really pretty. They are very nice. The shimmers are great. They do work like they're supposed to. It's not my favorite palette in my collection, but again, I do think it's good for anybody who's a beginner. I definitely think this covers a lot of your bases, and so I'm not going to be getting rid of this for the time being, just because I do like this, especially for taking in my kit or anything like that, because again, it covers many, many things. I just don't like having to store it. The packaging is so irritating to me, but Again, it's a pretty solid palette. I do remember it being stupid expensive though, and so I'm glad I didn't actually pay for it if I'm being real, like that would have been a no for me, girl. Okay, so next we're gonna talk about my Juvia's Place palettes. I do have four. Um, I do really like them, and I know my girl Danielle is over here hyping me up right now because Danielle loves Juvia's Place palettes, and for really good reason, they are very, very nice. So the first one I have is the Saharan palette by Juvia's Place. And first off, let me say that their artwork on all of their palettes is just absolutely amazing. This is what this one looks like on the inside. Again, very much my tones, leaning more warm, super, super pretty, and Juvia's Place is quite affordable. They go on sale all the time, and that is the best time to pick these palettes up. This next one is the Zulu palette, again, by Juvia's Place. First of all, this is my favorite one out of all the ones that I own. I use this a ton for really colorful looks. If I'm doing anything kind of rainbow-based, this is the one I reach for. The pan sizes in here are ridiculously generous. I love that so much. I don't know that I'll ever even hit pan. And so these perform so beautifully. This next one is the Masquerade Mini. I love the pops of blues and like purples in this one because I don't have too many of those in my collection so this really kind of fills that gap for me and I also really love that this one has more deep neutral tones in it instead of like the normal transition shades because I have so many of those but sometimes you don't always have the right undertone of a deep shade so I do really like these in this palette. I also have this one right here and this is the Magic. I do like this one a lot. I like that this one in here is a dark navy, not a black. That has been very useful to me in many, 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 many occasions. So I do really like this palette for that aspect. It is hard for me to keep an entire thing for one shade, but I do not have a dark navy blue in any of my other palettes. So that is why I will be definitely keeping this one at least for the time being. All right, this is the Butter London Natural Goddess palette. This is what the inside looks like. It is a really nice palette. I do think it's got some really solid colors in it. However, I think I have literally used this once when I filmed with my BoxyCharm box. And while the shadows are pretty, it is nothing that I don't already own. And I don't really think they are supremely special in which I feel like I need to keep it. So the formula is nice. The shimmers are decent. They're not like super, super glittery or anything, but again, it's more of a natural looking palette. And so I am not going to be keeping this one. My other issue with it is it really doesn't have a like natural looking transition shade because it has four shimmers and then a deep, deep brown and then a blue, which is great if that's what you're looking for. But I mean, to me, if you were gonna do something like this, the least you could have done is had a like lighter brown transition shade and I think that would have made this palette better so I'm definitely going to be trying to pass this one along. So this is the Ace Beauté Grandiose palette. I'm pretty sure this is the only one that I have from this brand and again this was something that I received in a boxy charm box. It is a really pretty palette again like you've seen thus far. These are very much my tones. I really do love the color story in this one. Very fall, very fun, very me. I also really do appreciate the pan size. It's a really generous pan size in here. And I do think the shadows perform nice. The mattes are good. The shimmers are pretty as well. 
Another one from the BoxyCharm family is this Celestial Thunder from Dominique Cosmetics. This is what the inside looks like. I'm not gonna lie, I was not really pleased when I received this in my BoxyCharm. I was like, oh, we could have done better. This was not one I would have bought from her brand anyways. I just don't think that the color story really screams to me. I don't know why everyone was so into a pop of blue there for a minute. You know, we had the Butter London one and this one. I just think blues are kind of random in my mind to put in here and I feel like this palette isn't really as cohesive to be able to be used on its own. Really the standout shade for me in this one is this shimmer up here. It is very, very pretty, but with that being said, I've only used this one time, I'm pretty sure, in the video that I filmed. You can tell that I've hardly dipped my brush into anything, and so I'm not going to be keeping this one. I am going to be passing it along. So this is the Zoeva Matte Palette. First of all, I love the packaging because it totally gives me New York City vibes, which if you know me at all, I love New York City. Again, it's got those warm, fun, funky fall vibes, and I really do think it is nice. Now, the shadow quality on this one is not that great, you guys. It is okay, but I definitely think it could be better. And with that being said, I am actually going to pass this palette along. I was going to keep it because I do like the tones. I do like that it's all matte, but I don't find myself reaching for it. I definitely have these shades in other palettes and yeah, I don't think it's worth to keep in my collection. So this is a Storybooks Cosmetics one, obviously. These are very easy to recognize. I do appreciate that aspect. This is the Robin Hood version. So a couple things. I like the packaging for the fact of like the design. Do you see that? It's so cool, it's so unique. I do get the aspect of making it a book. I think that's very on brand and cool. And while I like it, I also absolutely hate it. This is just way too bulky. It's way too wasteful. I cannot stand it. This is what it looks like on the inside, and as you guys can see, I have actually not used this. I have had this for a couple of months now, and it's because of the packaging that I haven't used it because of where I store it. It's not in my eyeshadow drawer, and so I don't ever reach for it. I don't ever think about it. However, I do really want to try it out. I know some people say that their shadows are really nice. I like the golds and the yellows and the greens. It's very fun. Not a bunch of shades that I have. So what I'm actually going to do with this one is I'm going to depot it out of here and put it in some of my Z palettes, which you guys will see here in a little bit. And I definitely want to try these out. So this is the Alomar Cosmetics Reina Del Caribe. And this is what it looks like on the inside. I absolutely love this palette. You can see that the blue shimmers and stuff have been used and abused. You guys, this is so good in my opinion. I love it. If I'm looking for something fun, something tropical, this is what I reach for. These two mattes right here are amazing. They work so well together. And again, I love the blue shimmers. They're very unique to anything else I have in my collection. So I will be keeping this palette. This is the Pure Cosmetics Festival palette. I do really like the packaging on this. I think it's super fun and super unique. However, I do not like what this palette has to offer me at all. I have literally used this one time. I did like this glitter, but it's definitely just a pressed glitter. It is not a shimmer or anything. Like, you definitely need glitter glue. You definitely got to do work. Like, you can see where, like, it's moved around in the pan. I do not like this palette enough to keep it. I do not use it, like, at all. All these shimmers up here, like, I already own. I have these two shades in my Juvia's Place palettes, which I think they perform better. Again, the mattes, all right. These are the only two standout shades in here as far as how my collection goes, and I don't care to keep it for that. So this is definitely going to be given to a new home. This is a newer one in my collection. This is the Glam Like the Cake palette. This is what it looks like on the inside, and again, the reason I do appreciate this palette because it has so many fun funky bold colors that like I mentioned in some of the palettes I've already said I'm going to give away. These shades in here make up for the ones that I was like talking about like the individual shades and in some of the other palettes and so I really do like this. I also like that this would be perfect come like Halloween time for really fun bold looks when you need a really bright specific color. So this is the BH Cosmetics Carly Bible Deluxe Edition palette. It is a really pretty palette. I like that it gives you both highlighters and shadows and things like that. It is really nice. I used to use it a ton. I don't use it as much anymore, which I'm trying to be better about. Part of me wants to say, like, go ahead and part with it, but at the same time, I had the original palette, not the Deluxe Edition, and when I bought this one, I got rid of the other one just to kind of 
you know, save space and be a little less wasteful because they were quite similar. This one just had the extras at the bottom. And so I do think I'm gonna hold on to this for a little while longer. Okay, so I'm showing these two simultaneously because they are very, very, very similar. Um, these are the Morphe palettes. These are in original packaging, as you can see here. They are not in their new packaging, so these are older, definitely for me. This is the 25A and the 25B. I really like these palettes. Part of me wants to pass them along, but they are quite old. And so I don't want to actually give them to anybody because I don't think their quality of life is much, much longer. So I know you guys know about this. This is the original Jaclyn Hill and Morphe palette. This is definitely a great palette. I have nothing negative to say about this. I love all the colors. I love the formulation. Everything about it is good. This is the Jaclyn Hill and Morphe Volume 2. This, again, another great one. I have nothing negative to say. I know so many people were like, this has too many of the same colors. Sometimes that's good, though, when you actually look at it because it makes things like learning how to do smoky eyes or really building up and blending colors. It's really good practice. You know, the more dimension you create in the eye look, the better it's going to be. I know we're not here to give tips and tricks, but... I have nothing bad to say about this palette. I really, really like it. Okay, you guys, so two more that I am going to show simultaneously for obvious reasons. This is the Morphe 350, the original one, and then the 3502. You guys, these were super popular back in the day. I love these. I love this one to freaking death, and then I absolutely had to have this one. These are so great in my opinion. I love them. They are my tones as you can already see. I have the Morphe and Jaclyn Hill Vault Collection. I did buy this when it first launched because obviously you guys know that I had the original Jaclyn palette and I loved it. And when they said they were coming out with these, I was like, yes, girl, give it to me. Now, before I jump in and show you them real quick individually, because that will take no time at all, I am going to give a blanket statement about the Vault Collection now. Individually, they are absolutely beautiful. I am obsessed with the idea of this, with the different color stories. I like how the packaging matches each of like the color stories. The details here are great. The color stories in each individual palette are great, especially if you wanted to buy them individually, if you didn't need all of them, if you were someone that was more pinks and neutrals or more, you know, like natural earthy type tones, or if you like the blues. I think the concept was there. This formula, however, is not as great as the original Jaclyn palette or the Volume 2 palette. So if I'm keeping it real, what I would say like kind of like the bummiest one out of the bunch is the Dark Magic. And that is because these just shades are more patchy, which is really bummy because I love the colors in here, like that dark navy, the super dark greens, like oh my gosh, it's such a fun and unique palette. I can get really great looks out of it. It does take a lot more work. I don't recommend this to a beginner because it can get very frustrating, but the shadows in here are gorgeous colors. This is my favorite one in this entire one, this green one over here, this potion. It's super beautiful, and that one does work pretty dang nice, so I do like this, but I definitely don't think, like, don't run out and get it. Um, the Armed and Gorgeous is a great one. This is probably one of my favorites because, again, we've got those warm earth tones. I recently did a look with these. I don't have a problem with any of the shades in this palette, so I do like this one the most. Next is the Bling Boss. Again, really pretty if you're into, like, pinks and purples and stuff. Some of these are patchy. Purples are more difficult to make in general, um, but these are really pretty. I would say that this is the second to kind of my least favorite one. It's just not as great in my opinion, but it is still nice. And then last but not least, you have the ring. Oh, I'm just jumping in. The ring, the alarm, and this is what this one looks like. Again, this one's more up my alley because it's those like more warmer, neutral type of shades with the pops of colors. Again, this one is pretty good. I still think the Armed and Gorgeous is better. So this first little cutie patootie right here is this Elf Bite Size Shadow in Carnival Candy. I got this this year, earlier in the year, and I absolutely love this. I have nothing negative to say about it. So I do also have this City Mini Palette with Shayla. I think it's pretty, but to me, it actually has limited possibilities with it like you do have to pair it with something else because of the color selection like especially if you're a beginner which to me when you're doing drugstore palettes a lot of the times you're getting younger girls and beginners who don't want to spend a ton of money I do remember this was very affordable but I just feel like 
this needed a different color selection. Like you've got two of these really similar ones right here. This kind of like high brow bone shade. You don't even have like a lighter transition shade. So it's a very dark palette. Um, for that reason alone, I am going to be um, parting with this one. I just don't reach for it enough. I have all these other um, shades and other palettes and other things. So this next palette is the NYX uh, like ultimate something. I know it's the Sugar High, that's its technical name. I do like this palette. I have used it quite a few times, more so when I first got it. My issue with this palette is I think it is definitely better suited for younger individuals because of the color story. It's very light, very natural, which isn't necessarily me. Um, and I think that the color story in this, it's, it's very minimal. It's hard to get a ton of looks, in my personal opinion, from this palette alone. This next one right here is the Milani Gilded Gold Palette. I picked this up at the very beginning of this year. I was so excited for this palette, you guys. You have no idea. The whole reason I wanted this palette was for this shade right here. And let me tell you right now, it was so underwhelming. I was so so bummed out about it. It was so patchy. It did not look great. I could get it to work, but it took way more time than I really wanted to for it to end up doing what I wanted it to. However, this is still a really nice palette. For the value, you are getting a ton of really pretty shades. You've got solid mattes. You've got nice satins and really pretty like, these are more like foil tape shadows. I wouldn't call them like shimmers. Um, I am going to hold on to this just because it is newer for me and because this is, this screams more like fall winter in my mind so I haven't been using it lately because obviously it's more spring summer right now at least and so I am going to hold on to this for a little bit longer because the shimmers in it are really really nice. So this is the Violet Boss Essentials. I'm pretty sure this is the very very first one and um, this palette is nice. Uh, but I'm not going to be keeping it. I'm going to go ahead and tell you that right off the bat. I think the formula is okay, but it's not, it's not great. I actually ended up getting another one today in a BoxyCharm, the volume, like the, the number two one, and I didn't even open it. I went ahead and set it aside for a giveaway because these just don't do it for me. Okay, so I'm showing two more together because again, they're the same thing. These are the NYX Avant Pop Shadows. This one is in the uh, colorway Art Throb, and this one is called Novu Chic. So these next ones are all individual shadows. So these are my Z palettes, which I really, really like. I actually have an extra Z palette that I have not yet to fill. I think these are great. I'm not gonna go in depth, but this is kind of where I keep most of my shimmers. All of these shimmers are Makeup Geek, and you can tell they are older because this is the OG packaging, but their shimmers are, I'm just mean top tier, like you guys, they are so nice. And like I said, I've had these a while, but like you just can't like, you can't tell me nothing. I will die on this hill. These shadows are amazing. I love these. Um, this is where I keep primarily my mattes. This is definitely a mix of Makeup Geek and ColourPop. ColourPop also has some really great single shadows. And then this is my mini Z palette, the very first one I ever, ever bought and curated. And these are some of my favorite shades. These two up here are obviously Creme Brulee and Peach Smoothie. Some staples in a collection for sure. And then I have some of my Cool Tone stuff because the last time I used this, I was doing a Cool Tone eye. So the reason I love this one, if you guys are wondering, like the Z palette itself, not necessarily just the shades in here, is because if ever I'm going to do a makeup look utilizing my single shadows, if I want to curate the look ahead of time, I will take all the shadows from these and like put them in here and put these ones back. And then that way I'm only having to hold up and deal with the one. This is also wonderful for travel. Okay, so I have a small stack of palettes here just for that I wanna to talk to you about because these are ones that I use specifically when I'm doing Halloween type stuff. So the first one I'm gonna to talk to you about is the Laura Lee Los Angeles Party Animal Palette. I got this in a boxy charm. So this is what the inside of this looks like. It's really fun, it's really funky, but this is not good quality, you guys. These shadows are not great. Um, they don't have good, like, blendability. They are kind of patchy. They're very beautiful, like, it's very exciting. Like, when I first got it, I was so pumped. But they just really aren't it, sis. And so I keep this because when I do Halloween makeup, I will scrape colors out of it to mix and create on custom colors, custom liners, things like that. And I just think, you know, considering I didn't technically pay for it, I don't mind it. And they are very unique. So these two are these, like, I don't even know how you say it, Handanean 
These are just literally glitter shadows. My friend actually got them off of, I, I think something like Wish. I'm not even going to BS you guys. But she like found them and they were no like dollar bills at all or something and she was like I knew you could use these and I actually really like them. Definitely be careful when putting glitters near your eye, especially when you're not 100% sure where they came from. This next one right here is the Maybelline The Graffiti Nudes. It is not a bad palette, but it is not a good palette for sure. The shades are rather chalky. They just could be way better. I just really don't have much to say about it. Now, the only reason I still have this again is for the same reason that I use it when doing certain shadings or things in Halloween looks, but I definitely don't recommend this palette. And honestly, if I'm keeping it real, this may be one after this season that if I don't use, I just chuck. So this last palette right here is the BH Cosmetics 88 Matte Eyeshadow Palette. This, you guys, is perfect. If you are someone that does Halloween looks or stuff with a bunch of color or anything like that, I highly suggest one of these. You can see that I have actually had pan on some of these shadows in here because I literally just bust them out of here. I will mix them with foundations. I will do certain things with them. I'll use them for blending. This is a great palette because it has so many tones of the same shade and this does not last long. You know, like one of these is not super, super big, but for the price, you just can't beat it. They actually work quite nice and I have used this a ton, a ton, a ton of times. Okay, so we are almost done here. I hope you guys do not mind. So now we're gonna move into my single shadows and my glitters and things like that. And I hope this is gonna move a little bit faster because I don't really have to go into too much detail. The first one that I'm gonna show you guys is this one right here. This is the Super Shock Shadow in Central Perk. You can see that she's broken. I'm not gonna open her because RIP, she's gotta go you know, she's got to go to the makeup heaven because she is dried out and crusty. So I have a couple more mattes that are also having to go. The mattes on the ColourPop um, Super Shock Shadows, they don't stay great very, very long. And, you know, it got to be where like single shadows in this vicinity weren't something I was reaching for. So sadly, I am having to say goodbye to these two. So we have these two shades right here. This is Glow. This was a really nice like brow bone highlight. And then this one right here was Cornelius. This was a really, really beautiful like all over the lid shade. Like if you were looking to do your makeup and just have like one color all over the lid, this was it. I'm so sad to have to see this one go, but again, she's dried out. This is another one that I'm also having to say goodbye to, which I'm super duper sad about. This one is in the shade Blaze. You guys, this was so beautiful, but unfortunately, as you can see when I do this, literally hardly anything is coming off. There is just no color payoff. I'm so sad about it, but you know, that is the like, you know, harsh reality of sometimes hoarding and collecting too much makeup that you almost forget to use things and then they go to waste and this is what I'm trying to avoid. So those ones are having to be let go, but I have a ton of the shimmers and I'm gonna run through these really quick. These are still in great condition. They're absolutely stunning and I will be keeping all of these. So this first one is the shade Muse. It's an absolutely beautiful, stunning pinky shade. It's so beautiful. This one right here is in the shade Weenie. Again, really pretty. I know it looks similar to Muse, but this is definitely more of a golden champagne instead of pink. This one right here is in the shade Midnight, and girl, if you were talking about a bomb, like, glitter smoky eye, ooh, child, nothing, this will just upgrade your look. Like, look at this right here. Oh, my lord. It is absolutely beautiful. It's like a pretty gunmetal gray with, like, greeny reflex. This one is another absolutely stunning one. This is in the shade Kathleen Lights. I liked most of the ones that came from Kathleen's collections. I just think she has such great taste. This is gonna be stunning for fall. I'm setting this aside to use again because look at that shade, you guys. It's so beautiful. Oh my God, those two together though. Wait, a thought. This one right here is in the shade Porter. Absolutely beautiful, a stunning purple. It's got the same great metallic reflexes. I really, really like this one as well. And then these last two I'm going to show together because I just absolutely love the way they look next to each other. Although I don't know that I've ever used them in conjunction and now I definitely think I'm going to have to. But this one right here is the shade Telepathy and this one right here is the shade Coconut. I used to use this a lot back in the day. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful blue. And this one, you guys, I just have to swatch and show you. First of all, it is so soft and reflective and hold on, look at this. 
Look at that, you guys. It is beautiful. It is such a unique shade, in my opinion, because it's got that, like, greeny gold color. Absolutely stunning. Okay, so I do have a couple more single shadows that I already know that I'm going to be parting with. So I'm going to just go through those really quick just to get it out of the way. This first one is this L'Oreal Infallible um, Metallic Paint thing. This is actually really pretty. I had a friend give this to me because she wasn't using it anymore. And while I do think this is pretty, I have this L'Oreal, again, Infallible. It's like, these are just these regular random eyeshadows. And this was in the shade Amber Rush. They're very similar. And I really prefer this one over this one because this is more powdery while this is more kind of like those ColourPop ones where it's a little more soft and kind of movable. So I'm going to be getting rid of this one just so that way I can keep this one because I really do like these. So these are the other products that I know I'm already just going to go ahead and be parting with. Again, these were gifted to me by a friend to try out. And I do not mind them at all, but I don't reach for single shadows that much, you guys. And I honestly have these shades in my collection already, and they're more cool tone, but you guys know I'm more warm tone. These are all just L'Oreal individual shadows. They are great quality, though. They are very pretty, but I don't use them, and so I don't want to keep them in my collection as to just be clutter. So this next product right here is a Josie Marin like water eye cream thing. I don't even know what it's technically called. This is an oldie but a goodie. I cannot part with this. I'm like 99.9% .9 sure this was the only one they ever made, like the only shade. And you guys, I'm just a sucker for this. So like you shake it up like this and you like mix it all together like that. And it is this gorgeous copper shade. And when you pull it out, it has this little like doe foot applicator on it just like that. And you guys look at this shadow. I'm like, are you kidding? It is so wet. It is so metallic. It is so stunning and it does dry down. So like this will set. You do have the ability to move it around and like sheer it out and get it how you want it. So this right here is the Kylie Cosmetics Yellow Gold. It's like the, I don't know, like cream shadow type of a thing. This is really pretty. I was almost going to give it away, but it actually has really beautiful color payoff. I just need to make sure that I put it in a place where I can actively reach for it and see it because it was kind of hidden in one of my drawers and that was what was kind of keeping me from using it. So this next product right here is the Tarte Chrome Paint Shadow Pot. This is in the shade Park Avenue Princess, and I actually won this in a giveaway, and you guys, I've never used it. I had it in its container, and I had put it in my drawer, and it got pushed to the back, and I am so upset at myself. I cannot wait. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my, I hadn't even ever swatched it. Oh Stop it right now. I cannot wait to use this, you guys. I have this set out. I'm putting it on my dresser so that way I can use it for fall and for maybe a Halloween look. I'm doing something really fun that this color would look absolutely stunning on. I'm so disappointed in myself for not having used it up until this point. I am not getting rid of this. That speaks for itself. That is stunning and I may have to look into getting more of these, but I may need to calm down because again, we're not trying to pick up a whole lot of clutter here, now are we? So this right here is actually another product that I have yet to use, and this is the Artist Couture Diamond Light Finisher in the shade Golden Hour. I picked this up because of Hey Jess, and I will link her channel. And I have had this, you guys, and all I've done is swatch it. I have yet to use it. It's like a glitter that like is kind of chunky when you touch it, if you can see right there. But then when you put it on your hand and begin to blend it out, it actually turns into a really beautiful like eyeshadow topper. The chunks blend away and it's just super, super pretty. And I am so excited to have this. I do love toppers. I prefer a topper over a shimmer almost any time. And so I am again setting this out so I can use this. I am not getting rid of this. This is bomb. So here are two products that I'm actually going to be getting rid of. These are the Maybelline Color Tattoos. This is the 24-hour leather something, and this is the, like, metal one. Um, these have gone so bad, you guys. These were pushed in the back. I don't use a ton of bases, which is why I mentioned I might get rid of the Kylie one, but it's actually super pretty and super unique. This is dried out. It does nothing. This has barely any color payoff. So I'm also going to be parting with this product right here. This is the Maybelline Color Tattoo. This is in the shade... 
electric emerald. Um, I wanted this to work so bad, you guys. I thought this was going to be something so amazing. Maybelline products do seem to be letting me down. I'm just saying. But it comes out in this doe foot. It's this like really pretty green color. However, the problem with this is, first of all, it dries down so super fast. And as you blend it out, it literally fades away to nothing. It becomes kind of patchy, if you can see there. So I was just really disappointed in this product, and therefore I never used it. And so now it's going in the garbage. So similar to that Maybelline one, I do have this Ciate London, like it's like eye luster, cream shadow type of a thing. I am going to be keeping this one only because I do think this one offers something a little bit different. Now, it is not my favorite. I use it for very specific reasons, but I like it because of its duochrome shift. And I, this one allows you to really blend it out and to place it in things. Now, you do have to be careful because it, if you don't blend it out quickly or carefully, it can become kind of funky with any other shadow you put on. So, glitters. Now, I've talked to you guys about the fact that I am such a matte shadow lover and that is true but when i want glitter i want glitter you know what i'm saying so the first things i'm going to talk to you about are the stila these are the glitter and glows i don't like the shimmer and glows um but i have four right here um in different shades my favorite is this one right here i think yes and this is kitten karma i have had so many of these throughout my years of makeup now i will say the bummer thing about these is they can go bad rather quickly so in my opinion and if you can get any of them in the mini sizes where they come in like packs of three that's how i got this one these I think are gonna be almost a better bang for your buck because you're more likely to get through these than get through a big one of these unless you're using it every day. On a more affordable note, if you want to maybe see if you would use something like that, these e.l.f., I don't exactly know what they're called, but they're like they're like a dupe of the gum Stila glitter and glows. These are so nice. I have used these in a tutorial before. These are absolutely bomb. They are obviously more affordable than the Stila ones. Now, I will say the only difference with these is these are slightly more shimmer than glitter. They do have glitter in them, but I think the Stila ones are more dramatic and more bigger chunks of glitter than these, but Again, if you're looking for something that's more affordable, they have some great colors in these. Very, very wearable, pretty much the same formula, easy to work with, highly, highly, highly recommend those. And then I have this um, Tarte Rainforest of the Sea. It is like this sea glass eye shimmer thing. This is what it looks like, and I love this so much, you guys. Now, they have quite a few colors, but none of them are wearable. This is the best one. And this is in the shade Sweet Life. And you guys, look at this. Again, absolutely stunning. This goes down so beautifully. It gives you plenty of time to blend it out. It dries in a way that does not crease or anything like that. It's so good. Will not be getting rid of that. The next thing I gotta talk to you about are these Urban Decay Glitter Liners. These are everything, you guys. Don't sleep on these. These are bomb. This is actually a backup of the Midnight Cowboy because I love that one so much. So these are the four different shades I have. I have it in a silver, like a pink, and then more like an orange gold along with the gold there. So I also have these LA Colors Shimmering Loose Eyeshadow with Brush. So I got these from a friend to try out, and I do think they're kind of cool. They're kind of innovative. It comes with a little brush on the inside. I'll show you, for example, one. And it comes with like the eyeshadow there and you're meant to, you know, like brush it on and things like that. Sorry, that was really janky. They do actually produce pretty good color pigment and payoff and they're really interesting and innovative, but I do not use these. I have these two Lit Cosmetics glitters that I got obviously with my Lit Cosmetics thing. I have an orange and a purple and these are bomb. I will not be getting rid of these. If you're looking for great loose glitters that are eye safe, these are the ones to go for. Okay, and so my last two glitters are this MAC Old Gold Glitter, which is just a big old thing of really fun greeny gold glitter. These are impossible to go through, but I do like having it because, again, I don't feel the need to replace. And then probably the most uh, kind of recognizable is this Makeup Forever Starlet Powder in the number 13. You guys, this is insane. Oh my gosh, like... There is nothing about this that is not like super, like it's just, oh my God, like look at that. 
it is almost like take your breath away in your face. It's very, very pretty. I love that so much. I don't like any of the other ones. I will not be getting rid of this. But yeah, you guys, anyways, that is everything now. I know I have been here way too long, but I am excited because I feel like I did get rid of a nice chunk of things. I know it wasn't the most craziest amount, but again, I do keep my collection fairly small to begin with. But yeah, I really hope that you guys enjoyed watching. If you did, please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I post new videos every Tuesday and Friday, and if you hit that notification bell, you will never miss an upload from me. Last but not least, you can also come follow your girl on Instagram, at Alyssa and Pope, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!